Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, so right now, we are going to talk about the uh, craziness that was going on between Rick and Negan during this last episode, which was highly entertaining. I thought it was actually like some of my probably like favorite Rick lines ever mm -hmm. in like the history of the whole show. Uh, every once in a while when he finally gets the upper hand on an enemy, he'll say some like really mean and sadistic stuff to them, like right before he exacts his revenge and the way he was like toying around with Lucille, lighting it on fire and like, I'll make you deal, let you kiss her goodbye. I was just like, oh my God, this guy's lost his mind. Um, that was a great scene in that, that building that they destroyed with Negan falling through two stories and all the walkers that got lit on fire and stuff. Uh, awesome. Oh, and, you know, um, what, what was it? I can't remember a couple episodes ago they said that it was like a Tarantino reference to like Reservoir Dogs or something. Mm -hmm. I thought that Negan's fall was another uh, low-key Tarantino reference to Death Proof where you have Zoe Bell on, like, the roof of a car. And, and prior to that scene, they talk about how she's this great stunt woman and how she fell in this ditch, and if anyone else had fallen, they would have broken their neck. But they call her Zoe the Cat. And there's this, like, scene where she goes flying off of a car, and everyone thinks she's dead, but it's like, she's a fucking cat. <laughs> so she's perfectly fine. That's definitely, like, what Negan... Yeah, he, he said I'm a cat. Yeah, he's not limping or anything. Like, no. he, he fell, like... The perfect way to fall. So I felt like that was another like, Tar like whoever's writing this season, I think they re are a Tarantino fan. They love Tarantino. Yeah. Um, I th I feel like a lot of people sort of missed the uh the the point. Like you know when he chases Negan down, we don't really see like how the cars crash, but you know Rick empties like an entire AK forty seven clip into that car and purposely doesn't wait until he's up close to Negan to start firing. Um, a lot of people are saying like it's like an error in the writing that um, he or he can't aim. or he can't aim. I feel like everybody missed the point. He wants to torture Negan. He wanted to like you know he basically was like a cat toying with the mouse before he finally bites the head off. And 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 I agree with that point, but I also think there's another layer to it. Um, earlier in the episode, Rosita and Maggie are talking on the scaffolding, and uh, one of them says something. I can't remember which one said it, but they were talking about, like, well, do you think he'll be okay? They are talking about Rick, and Rosita, I think, says something about silence. And I think for Rick at this point, if Negan's dead, right, if the war's over and Negan's dead, then the silence sets in. And if there's silence, there's insanity, there's madness. And a lot of grief, because then he'll be forced to think about Carl nonstop. Yeah, especially since, you know, Carl, again, took the time to write you know, one of, one of his last moments was dedicated to writing a letter to Negan. Mm -hmm. So, killing Negan, I don't think Rick deep down really wants to kill Negan right now because he's so conflicted about what happened to his son and, you know, a plethora of things. So I don't think, you know, I don't think it was his, his like, if you have a machine gun, you don't, when the other person just has a bat, you don't have to keep your distance at that point. You can just run up on them and shoot if you really wanted to. Yeah, and he also, like, purposely threw the AK away when he hadn't even emptied the second clip before he went into that that house or building or whatever it was. Um, he's clearly, like, going out of his way to not kill Negan. Uh, he also, like, when he emptied the python inside, you know, like, he starts reaching back as if he's going to reload it, but then he changes his mind and decides to, like, throw the axe at him. I mean, obviously, like, throwing an axe tomahawk style, unless it hits you right in the face, is probably not going to kill someone. Like, everything that he did was purposeful to just, like, scare Negan, intimidate him, and basically, like, drive the idea into him, his mind of, like, I'm fucking in control now, not you. Like, he wants him to feel the, the sense of loss of control that Rick has felt these past two seasons. He's, like, getting him back for all the little, like, injustices that have gone on along the way. And that's why he, you know, <laughs> messes with them by, like, lighting Lucille on fire and doing all this stuff that he just knows is going to get underneath Negan's skin worse than anything else. Um, I, was, I thought that was hilarious, by the way, when he, like, lights her on fire and is like, you know, come get her, and Negan just is, don't touch her! <laughs> tackles him. Oh my god, he just turns into a whiny little bitch when it comes to that bad now, doesn't he? <laughs> Mr. Tough Guy until that bat gets involved. Yeah, he's got his own demons and psychosis, clearly. Clearly. Um, I, uh, you know, when, okay, that was the other, I have, I have notes, that's so why I keep looking down, that's my notes. Yeah. Um, 
I don't have a journal. I just write in my notepad on my phone. So, uh, when Negan makes that deal in honor of Carl, um, I think it was interesting that you know, of all the things that Rick could have brought up um, in terms of you know trusting Negan or not, he decides to bring up the trash people as uh, bringing validity to, to the point that Negan can't be trusted. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's part of the reason why he chases Negan is to, you know, in some way prove to himself that he's right and Carl's wrong about him. And, like, you know, he doesn't bring up the fact that, you know, well, a few weeks ago or however long it was, you had me and my son kneeling and you were going to bash his head in. He doesn't bring that up. He brings up the trash people who he couldn't get two shits about. Um, that is interesting. And he accuses Negan, you know, well, you wiped out that community that none of us really even care about. Um, you know, I, I think if Rick hadn't known about the, 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 the trash people or if he knew for certain that Negan didn't have anything to do with that slaughter, um, I think the conversation definitely would have gone differently. Like, right now, Rick's looking for, like, he's trying to prove himself correct. Um, he's questioning why Carl would think that, why Carl would do the things that he, you know, why Carl did what he did, and he's, he's using that as a reason to, like, you know, get, get rid of Negan. But it clear, he's clearly at war with himself over it. Speaking of the, uh, trash people thing, that was really interesting because Rick didn't even realize that Negan didn't know about that when he said it. When he yeah. said it, I mean, the look on Negan's face, like, that was, to me, kind of like the first time that he seemed, like, truly terrified because he had two major realizations, like, at the exact same moment. Like, A, I'm losing this battle. Like, this guy could kill me at any second right now. Like, I'm disarmed. Cool. This guy's insane and doesn't care if he dies, too, in taking me out, which is the most dangerous type of person, somebody who doesn't care if they die, too. It's like fighting a crackhead. Yeah, you can't reason with them. I mean, he's just totally beyond reason. Um, and the second thing is that when he says that thing about Simon, he realizes, like, oh, my God, like, my most trusted confidant totally betrayed me. And when, so it's like, even if he does get out of the situation with Rick, like, what does he do once he gets out of it and goes back to, like, a treasonous leadership? Well, well I think he, he's had his suspicions about Simon for a while, but that just confirms... He was pissed, though. I mean, he, like, He was definitely you know, pissed. He was but, like... But, <sighs> but we both know that he's been suspicious. He's been kind of sniffing around Simon, like, you know... Yeah. Um, so getting that confirmation, like, he was so distracted by the betrayal that he didn't even, you know contradict Rick at that point um which you know if if they I just think if they had actually talked it out or if Negan wasn't stunned by Simon's betrayal or if Rick knew that Negan hadn't made that call like that conversation would have been a bit longer would have been more talking and maybe less crazy on Rick's part I don't know um Rick was in the same like mindset as he was when he hacked Gareth to death you know, it's just um, like, this I is revenge, I want to make you suffer well, see, as I much as possible. Like I, I disagree with that, because with Gavin, that was... Gareth. Gareth. Why do I keep calling him Gavin? I do the same thing. I think I did that on a different video. <laughs> who was Gavin? Is there a Gavin? Well, Gavin was the name of that other savior who was in charge of the kingdom. Right. Okay, Gareth. Anyway, uh, Gareth Terminus. Um, Rick wasn't crazy, though. He was totally 100% sane, and he was 100% right for hacking that guy up into pieces. Like, how do you roll up in the church to go, you know, kill and eat a baby and a child? Especially if it was my baby and my child, I'm fucking you up too, and I'm taking my goddamn time. Um, this whole thing with Negan is different because, you know, Negan, you know, one, he's not a cannibal. And two, you know, it's clear that Negan held Carl in high esteem he apologized to Rick for his loss. Like, he, like that's something that even some of his own people didn't do. That's like, true. Which is weird and disturbing in and of itself. Yeah. You're getting condolences and, like, they're like I understand you're going through something. Yeah, they're yin and yang. Well, I mean, no, well, Negan verbalizes what his own, like, excluding Michonne, he verbalizes what his own people cannot. Like, you know, you're going through something I can't even imagine, Rick, and I get it. Like, he's acknowledging his grief right now, which which is a powerful thing, and also bizarre, because it's Negan. But, yeah. I mean, it's clear that Negan cared about Carl and his... I mean, he had plans for him. 
Yeah, he said that Carl was the future. That's, yeah. a, that's exactly what he said. He said that kid was the future. So, no, he said is well before he knew he was dead. And yeah. not to Rick, which means that he was sincere. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I knew he was sincere anyway, but that's just confirmation that, you know, I'm talking to people, not Rick. He, he talked Carl up and how impressed he was to his own people. Who was he talking to? I don't remember. Was it, it was either Simon or Eugene or so, uh, I think probably Something Simon. Like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, but anyway, to sum it all up, that was a really, really great scene. I really liked the way that they did the dialogue there. Um, I thought that they, they did a good job of kind of, like, thinking through well what the two would say, and I thought it was quite clever how they set it up in the previous episode for Negan to not know about Jadis's like, massacre at the trash heap until Rick inadvertently told him. That was just, like, really interesting how Rick didn't even realize, like, the gravity of what it was that he was saying to him and like and you know Negan probably wouldn't have found out until like I don't know I guess he like tried to make a deal with Jadis again in the future or whatever and discover that they were all missing mm -hmm. so really really well done this is probably one of my favorite episodes of the whole series actually um, because of little things that they did like that just from like a technical standpoint that was really really well done um, anything more about Rick and Negan? Those two need to have a sit down, and uh, yeah. I think that's probably going to come before the end of the season. Yeah, I think so, too. Um, on that note, if you guys like our content, make sure to subscribe right up here in the corner. Also, check out our social channels. They're on the screen. And also, check out the blog, thelivingrochon.com. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and we will talk to you next time. Bye-bye.